and speaking of resources and treasures today is a wonderful show and the gentleman that is with us first off is a real treasure uh, he is currently the dramaturge at the Carmel Bach Festival but he is an artist he is a vocalist extraordinaire an opera singer and so many other things David welcome to the show Thank you, Steve. It's really great to be here again. Oh, it's just so nice <laughs> to see you, and we're right in the thick of it with the, the Bach are, Festival. We are right in the thick of it. Uh, we, uh, as of today, have had 84 rehearsals. Oh, my goodness. In the last six days. You know, do the math. <laughs> yeah. uh <-huh. laughs> I yeah. can't even do the math on that. And uh, tonight at 7 o'clock, we'll be having... Uh, uh, two or three rehearsals that will be happening at the same time in different locations. Oh, well, it's, it's a busy, it's a really busy time. Very exciting for us, but we're going to talk about you also. Okay. And I, let's start the early years, and, and mm -hmm. let's go to that DG1 shot, um, <laughs> uh, Jim, if you wouldn't mind, uh, uh, the David Gordon one. And, oh and okay. my goodness, yes. Now, you've got to tell me, is, is that's you playing the accordion? That is me playing the accordion. Okay. And, and, and why was I playing the accordion? <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> I, I studied piano for a while when I was a little kid because kids are supposed to do that. Sure. Okay. And somehow I, I picked the accordion. Uh -huh. And I thought the accordion would be a cool thing, and I had a lot of fun with it. I bet. And then one day I was at the Memorial Day Parade in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, where I grew up, and mm -hmm. my accordion teacher, Juanita Huntsberger, was riding on a farm wagon being pulled by a tractor, sitting on a bay of, hail, uh, a bay of hay, and Candy's Got to Dance dance studio students, all dressed in tutus, were dancing on this, wa on this hay wagon, with Miss Huntsberger playing the accordion. And I looked at this setup, and I never went back for another lesson. You, you didn't? I, I, I just thought go that'd back. be it for you. That's that, seal it. No, that's, I don't know. No, that's it. I, I, I didn't go to the dark side. Okay, all right. <laughs> I thought, maybe my musical career choices are more limited with the accordion. I okay. still play it a little bit, uh -huh. but I didn't make it a profession. <laughs> All right, and then you did, but you, you, you continued with music. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, you found that wonderful voice, and you went into folk music. I did. And, Jim, could we go to the, the, the DG2 shot here, uh, the, the Spring Hill Boys? Or? The Spring Hill Boys. Oh, tell us about that. One of these guys was a uh, freshman at Drexel University. I was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. The guitarist was a senior in high school. So that banjo player went on to be a... Um, uh, a mechanical engineer in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. The guitar player went on to be a U-2 pilot for the CIA, and he <laughs> lives up in Northern <laughs> oh California <boy>. now. <laughs> and I went on to do what I do. But, oh you know, boy. back in the 60s, everybody was doing folk music. Right. Every, everybody was involved in it. It was like this huge national folk music crisis that went all around. And I had a ball with it, and that I have kept. I've always had a guitar in my life. Oh. I mean, in that, in that photo you showed, I was playing the mandolin. That was a brief sidetrack in my okay. in my early folk career but guitar is my instrument and uh, I do uh, concerts around this area occasionally just for fun and then now the, uh, could we go to the next one uh, Jim uh, there the, the, you did outside the box yeah an, an album or I did an album uh, we recorded it here in um, I think it was about 2006 2007 you can find it on cdbaby.com you can come oh, okay. to my website spiritsound.com okay. and you can and find information. It's a live concert. It's 18 or 19 songs with all my goofy patter in between. Uh huh. And it's every. It's a little bit of everything. I do kind of traditional folk, jazz, pop, Fats Waller, uh, George Gershwin, everything in between. Tremendous. And the guitar has been my psychotherapy over the years. Ah uh, yes. When the world weighs heavy on my shoulders. Yes. I pick up the guitar and I press it to my heart oh. and I play it. <laughs> oh. And boy. It, every the world makes sense to me <laughs> when I'm playing the guitar. Let me put it that way. And that makes sense to me. Yeah. Now you 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 then you, you flew across the Atlantic Ocean. You ended up in Europe. And I it, did. Could Jim? Could we go to to, to the the next uh, shot here? <laughs> what <laughs> it, this is Pearl Fisher? What? This was the Pearl Fishers by George Bizet. Okay. And it's a wonderful opera by the guy who wrote the famous opera Carmen. All right. And this is another one of his hits. It's not so well known but it's a beautiful piece 
And so the, um, in that photo, the mustache is mine, but the beard is, is glued on. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a fine mustache. Uh, yes. I, I, <laughs> that's I, a good-looking yeah, mustache yeah. I, um, I, I have had a beard from time to time. It's uh -huh. pretty impressive. It takes me about two weeks to grow a beard. Well, that's not, that's but, not very but long. But I, uh, I trained at the Lyric Opera of Chicago after oh, I got out of college. I okay. trained at the Lyric Opera of Chicago. They have a wonderful training program there, and I was in the first year of it in 1973. Okay. And then I went to Europe, as a lot of singers were doing in those days. I went to Europe, and I worked full-time in Austria for four years in an opera house where uh, it was a, like a repertory company. You were mm -hmm. full-time employed, and you'd do a bit role one night, a leading role the next night. You were constantly in rehearsal. And in four seasons, I did 19 different operas. Wow. And that was my apprenticeship. You sure. know, that was my, or my journeymanship. Sure. Because that was, that taught me how to get up every day and do it. Okay. No matter what you're feeling like, no matter what has happened to you in your emotional life or how, what inconveniences you have, the show must go on. Yes. The sh literally, the show must go on. People have bought tickets. And unless you're deathly ill or you've broken your leg or you've lost your voice, mm -hmm. you have to show up and do it. No excuses. And it's a great tradition in show business mm -hmm. and it keeps us from being pampered mm -hmm. because there's this, this ancient creed that the show must go on. I, I learned that. that in Austria. Okay. Now, yeah. I, I'd like to just flip through a couple of these. Mm -hmm. Jim, okay, now this one just, wh wh which one is this? This is The Bartered Bride by Friedrich okay. Smetna, and that wonderful character, he, I loved playing that guy, he stuttered, and the stuttering was written into his entire part. While you're singing? While you're s -s -s singing, and you have to s -s sing like the that, that, that. Oh, my gosh. And he's so sweet. Oh, man. Uh, and, and so, as you can tell from the expression in my eyes, I'm a bit of a goofball. And uh, <laughs> that helps me a lot. You know, an opera singer gets, gets, gets paid to play make-believe. Yes. We yes. dress up and play crazy characters yes. and sing in languages that nobody knows. And, you know, <laughs> but it's really, for me, as kind of a... I'm a little bit of an introvert uh -huh. privately, okay. but the opera gave me permission mm -hmm. to be an extrovert. And okay. I loved playing these crazy roles with crazy makeup and dancing and comedy or scary or something. Oh I, loved, I loved playing the really wacky characters in what, opera. What character is this? That is Bardolfo oh. in Verdi's Falstaff. Okay. The Shakespearean character is Bardolph. Right. You know? Okay. Remember right. in, in Henry V, you got Bardolph and, and Pistol and all those guys and okay. with, with Falstaff. So this was, uh, this was actually in Japan. Uh, we were over there wow. doing uh, uh, an opera. Seiji Ozawa was conducting it. We were over Ooh. there for a month. It was really fun in the, in the mid-90s. Um, and a, as you can see, uh, I've got a rubber nose on and a crazy wig and... Um, I, uh, that was the kind of role I, <laughs> I totally got into. <laughs> the kind of role where when you come out the stage door, nobody recognizes you. Yes, okay, right. <laughs> All the autograph hunters <laughs> look right past you because they think you're in the chorus or something. Now, what, it, what, is this one San Francisco Opera? That is the Houston Grand Opera. The Houston? Houston Grand Opera. This was a, from an opera called The Tales of Hoffman. And oh. in The Tales of Hoffman, um, the baritone and the tenor roles that I sang are the sung by the same people in four different acts, which are different stories. So you play a different character in each act. Oh boy. This was the first act. I actually have a, a shot of this same character after the act was over and the makeup's all melted and he's <laughs> looking. To, and then I would come off frantically during the 20 minute intermission. Right. The costumers and makeup guys would strip everything off and completely make me up again oh for gosh. something else. Oh, but it's so much fun. Again, if it's good to play a one wacky character in an opera, it's even better to play four. You get to play four. <laughs> and so after, after traveling around, mm -hmm. then you, you, you came back to San Francisco Opera. I did. And yeah. now, how, what is this one? This was a production of Verdi's Rigoletto. Okay. Uh, designed and directed by Jean-Pierre Ponel. Every single member of the cast had a large rubber nose glued on. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but that's what we did. Okay. It was a very lurid kind of, of production, and oh. many of us kind of okay. it was a little over the edge. No, I see, <laughs> and y'all had big red hats. We all had too. big red hats. It's all red. It was red like a brothel. It was really strange. 
yeah. And how about this one? I love these costumes. Uh, this is from uh, Puccini's Turandot, also at the uh, San Francisco Opera. Okay. And it was sort of, it was designed sort of like uh, the planet Mongo. It's a mythical Chinese uh, kingdom, but it was all done uh, with, uh, with heavy makeup and crazy costumes. It took about an hour to put that makeup on. They oh, stenciled wow. your face. They, they, had, they cut out stencils to design the makeup, okay. and then they would trace the stencils on your face and fill it in like paint by numbers. Oh, be done. And then spray it so that it wouldn't melt off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, and, and after San Francisco, is that when you came down yeah. to the festival? Yeah. When I, was, when I was in San Francisco in the early 80s um, at the opera, right. I was already starting to discover the joy of standing still in my own clothes and my own shoes oh. and singing non-operatic music. Okay. It might be Bach or Handel's Messiah, uh -huh. uh, things like that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what we call concert music or oratorio. In other words, you're a soloist with a symphony orchestra. I see. And I started getting into that um, because in order, you know, if you go somewhere for opera, you have to be there for maybe seven or eight weeks. Mm -hmm. But you go somewhere to sing a concert, you have to be there for maybe seven days. Mm -hmm. And then you go on to the next gig. Okay. It's a little, it's a, it's a different kind of rhythm. And that's what brought me, yeah, there we go. Okay. I actually, I actually that, that uh, dog was the dog of the photographer in, this was a photo taken in Eugene, Oregon. And uh, this, this dog was just lounging around and uh -huh. the photographer put dog biscuits in both my hands. Oh. And that's what he's, that's, that's what he's going for there. Okay. But we just, we thought the dog's in black and white, I'm in black and white, let's sure. do a photo. And I tell you, that's gorgeous. Photo editors love this. You know, I when bet. I send it, when I send it to a, a newspaper or mm -hmm. something, this is the one. That's the pick. one that they pick, yeah, right? Yeah, you can teach a dog to sing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when, when you, when did you first get involved with the Bach Festival? Then, 1983 was, it? was oh, the first okay. time I sang here. Okay. Uh, I was hired here and uh, I, I came down and auditioned in 82 mm -hmm. and they immediately hired me for 83. But I was already tied up for a few years, and so okay. it was a couple of years before I could get back, and I've been here every summer ever since then, and I've lived here for the last 10 years. And you are celebrating 25 years. 25 seasons. Seasons. 25 festivals over a period of 30 years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, I think I've got a, th there's a picture, I think, um, th th this is you singing yes. uh, recently, or? Yes, this was me singing at, a, at a, a solo concert I did with a pianist friend of mine here in, uh, in Carmel uh, probably four or five years ago. So you're still doing the concerts? I do, very, I do very little of it now. Uh -huh. uh, I've, over the last couple of years, I've pretty much gotten off the treadmill. The thing is, if you're going to do a hundred performances a year or one performance a year, right. you have to stay in shape the same way. Oh, boy. And there comes a time for every singer when you decide when am I going to pack it in right. so that I don't have to spend two or three hours every day, every day. just practicing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because it's a little bit, especially for me as a tenor, uh, mm -hmm. my voice teacher was a baritone and he used to say that tenors spend their entire lives defying all the laws of nature. You know, tenors, <laughs> tenors sing way, way high right. up. And it takes some workout every day to keep that all in shape. Oh, boy. I'm so busy with other stuff I like. I'm writing, I'm teaching, I'm mm -hmm. working for the Bach Festival in a myriad of different ways there. Mm -hmm. And so the singing was actually kind of getting in the way. Okay. That is the keeping up. Okay. Now, when I sing with my guitar, which I still do occasionally, really, that doesn't require the same kind of tenor muscles. It's a lot friendlier okay. for everybody involved. All right. <laughs> now, is this, is this the first uh, uh, Bach Festival? Uh, yeah, this would be back in the very early early um, 1990s, Okay, and I was probably on stage there introducing one of the concerts in, I in, see. The, in the old Sunset Auditorium. Okay, yeah. and then I think I, we've got a, this is a fairly recent. Yes, this would, be, this would be probably from last year mm -hmm. on our Tuesday night concert. Um, we do a concert at the Bach Festival every year on Tuesday nights that has some kind of a thematic string running through it, and I narrate it. I create a script or a narration that ties the pieces together. And um, we started this under our previous music director, Bruno Weil, at the festival, and we've continued it with Paul Goodwin, and we have a really good time. We're doing French music this year. Well, I yeah. want to go back to this picture yeah. right now. Oh, Tell yeah. us who that is. Oh, man, that's Virginia Best Adams. She was the wife of Ansel Adams, the yes. photographer. And in 1984, uh, on her 80th birthday, a bunch of friends and family got together and funded 
a training program for young singers at the Bach Festival. Okay. I've been running that ever since 1990. She died in 2000, mm -hmm. and so I had the chance for 10 years to know this wonderful woman. I never met Ansel. Uh, he died just shortly before I got here. Mm -hmm. But Virginia, for whom this program is named, mm -hmm. was a really wonderful woman and a woman of great strength. She was a member of the board of the Sierra Club before Ansel Adams joined. Really? She has a number of significant first ascent uh, credits in the, uh, in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And I'm talking about first ascents wearing wool clothes and leather boots and that sort oh of thing. Oh my goodness. And, and you're still involved, you're teaching? Yeah. There? Yeah. I'm teaching. This is a, this is a wonderful program that, that we have now that brings four young uh, performers in and we coach them. The coaching sessions are open to the public these next three weeks, noon to two on Mondays and Thursdays at uh, Church of the Wayfarer in Carmel. You can go to the Carmel Bach Festival website, okay. bachfestival.org, bachfestival.org. And all these, all these free things are there, um, including these wonderful training sessions for these singers. And I could tell every time I talk to you about this, th this is really something that is inside of your heart. Oh, yeah. This oh, is yeah. what you, you like. I came to Carmel for the music, and I stayed for the people and the place. Um, I grew up in dairy farm country in Pennsylvania. The Pacific Coast is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And the Bach Festival starts when and? We open Saturday night, okay. the 13th of July, and we will have 44 performances in 15 days. Four, f so that's almost three per day. Yep. And you'll be giving the uh, uh, pre-concert talks? Be, I'll be giving a lot of the pre-concert lectures and intros to things. And uh, we have a, a pre-concert chat before every one of our main concerts. And it's okay. not about facts. It's about opening up your heart and getting excited. David, thank you so much for visiting us, and we hope you come back again sometime. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I'd love to come back anytime. Okay. Thanks.